typically we do mock-ups include your business card, your letterhead. Now for people that are really curious about designing your own letter, I mean your own mock-ups, let's dive right into it. So I'll just go on to Google. Right here, so we'll just search letter head pop up. This saves you what this is going to save you is going to save you data. You don't get to spend so much on downloading mock ups every now and then. So, as you can see, I just searched letter head mock up, and this is why I have. We look for the easiest one to manipulate because. What we are going to do in Corel is just to manipulate our mapper, manipulate an existing mapper. So we can see different letterheads here. Let me just go for a simple one that I can easily manipulate. That won't stress me that much. For example, let's take a look at this. We can work with this. So all you just have to do is right click and copy. Look at the image size. This is 2000 by 1039 pixels. So it's a very good quality. So I can just copy. Take it right into my crowdraw. Now this is it. I just paste it to my crowdraw. I'll just reduce the size. So in case people ask you, ah, where do you download your mock-up from? Oh God, I know download them. So this is your mock-up. You just design your letterhead. First things first, you design your letterhead. This is not the accurate size of the letterhead. I'm just gambling so let me just pick the logo pick the logo here so you know you design your letter here to your taste isn't this um, So this is my letter head. Let's just say this is my letter head. Let's just say this is my letter head and this is the actual time here. For website. Now I'm just trying to do something really basic. to do something really really basic okay so yes i have to curve this angle of the rectangle so I just use my shape tool hold on your control then you click and drag and it gives you that curve i'm just doing a basic letter design copy the fill to this Uh, I like to increase this outline, let's say to 4. Now convert it to objects. Oh, you know, it's an outline. Look at this. An outline. This is showing few, none. Now I will convert outline to object. So it goes from the outline to the few. So I can now give it a few color. So I'll just drag this into this and copy the properties. Yeah, so that's it. Let's say this is my letter head. This is my letter design. So let me keep a copy. And the next thing is I convert this to bitmap. Go to bitmap, convert to bitmap. Use a reasonable resolution. If your system is not strong enough, you can use 300. It'll be okay. So you use 300. You can see the quality is still okay. So you know what you just did? You just converted this to picture. You can't edit the text anymore. Can't edit it anymore you can't edit anything there so it's uneditable so the next thing is you just drag it over scale down and you can use the object perspective add perspective 
can use your perspective to put it in the right place. Put it in the right place. In the right place. Okay, so that's fix it. So now we have the pen under it. So what you can do is you can just give this a transparency. I mean the original letter, I give it transparency. Let's give it 100 so it's not showing. So all you just have to do is you use your bezier tool or your pen tool, whichever one is convenient for you. Use whichever is convenient for you and trace this out. Trace this out. I don't know what's wrong with this mouse. Okay, trace it out. Out. Yeah, after doing that, you can now select, you know, with trace this like this. You hold your shift button on your keyboard and you click on the picture itself. Then you do what? You intersect. So that means you just copied that pen. So I can therefore get rid of this black outline and my pen is here now. So now, you know, the image is there already. Or I made the opacity 100 so you can just remove the transparency then you bring this back up and I don't just right click on it you go to um, order where is order is there no order here? Uh, can't find it well the shortcut is shift page up hold on your shift button and click on and press page page up on your keyboard so just brings it up so another thing you should uh, pay attention to is the shadow of the pen if you look at the original let me look at the original it's having this shadow here so you can create yours using your bezier tool or your pen tool again create your own shadow it's that simple Let's bring it back on. So this is the shadow. Let me give it a um, color black. Move the outline. Then the next thing is you convert to bitmap. If you are if you are using the latest version from 2019, you might not need. I mean, from 2020, 2021, 2020 to CorelDRAW, you might not need to convert to bitmap. But for those using earlier version like 2013, you will need to convert. Reason is because you can actually just add blur to this shape you know it's a shape you can just add blur to it i don't know if you feel me you can just add blur to it directly and it will work but in um older version of 2013 2011 and the likes that's not possible so what you have to do is you convert a bit more first You can use 500, this is quite small, so it doesn't lose quality. You can use 500, let's say. Then you go back to your effects, adjust, I mean blur, then you add Gaussian blur. You can see, you can just adjust the radius till it's not so thick. Okay, let me stop at this and I click OK. So once I click OK, you know, it's it is showing on top of this pen so what you have to do is you have to bring the pen above so you hold your shift button and click page up so it comes above the pen and another thing is the the shadow is showing on this black part on this gray part of the of the mock-up and that gray part has its own shadow already so what you have to do is you have to intersect this with the shadow 
So that means I just copy the part of the shadow. Yeah, that's it. So I can delete the one on the gray part. So this is it. It's not perfect, but I mean, it works. All you just have to do is to reduce the opacity. So let's say like 30. That's how it looks like it's matched. So no one would know you just got the image from Google and except they saw the image on Google. And and that's it. You you have your own mock-up. See? It's movable. You can now replace this with any image you want. You can even make it easier by adding uh, a rectangle over it. Bring this up. So and just uh, this is your mock-up. This is your blank mock-up. So you can just drag it inside, power clip, edit your power clip, and make it go to the right place you want it to be. And that's all. Now another thing you should pay attention to is when you're creating mock-up yourself, you have to pay attention to details. Now another thing is if you look at this, there is a shadow casting here. I don't know if you see it. Is the shadow from this flower vase casting here so you have to affect that also so let me go back into my arc clip i'll make this opacity 100 then um this it has a white background i'll make the opacity 100 also so i can see what i'm doing and because i already power clipped so now i have to do the same thing i did for this pen you do it for this also it's that simple. So, the black, convert to bitmap, effects, adjust, blur, motion blur. This time, the radius has to be much. I don't know if you feel me. The radius has to be a lot. I mean, I think this works. Yeah, this works. All you just have to do is, like we did the earlier time, you use this rectangle to intersect the shadow so it doesn't fall on that part again. This is intersect. Yeah, right here. It's intersect. This is intersect. Yeah, then you can delete the one on that background. So you have it here only. This is it. So you can just use your transparency to, you know, reduce it. This time, 50 looks a bit harsh compared to the original. Yeah. Compared to the original, 50 looks a bit harsh. Let's compare it to the original. It looks harsh. Yeah. So, uh, all you just have to do is let me bring back, you know, I already gave this uniform transparency you just remove it make it white so you can see the exact thing you're doing you can see it looks harsh so i can just uh, increase it this time you know it is it it's yeah so let me go into my power clip and bring this back up remove the transparency so this is it simple if you feel like you need to adjust more of the mock up i mean of the shadow you can just adjust it yourself when I mean, you just play around it it's just the use of shadow so what i'm trying to do just to make sure it uh, fits but then just it might, have, it might not be perfect you know and you still feel like it's not perfect the shadow is somewhere from here and this place is somehow you can use your transparency to just you know okay i already gave it a uniform transparency so i'll have to convert it to bitmap if i want to add more transparency to the already transparent to the already object that you've added transparency effect to before so you have to convert it to image that's convert to bitmap so i can now use transparency again you see Do it again here. Yeah. 
So basically that's it. So the shadow is casting on it. It looks a bit all organic and original. So um, I just did this mock up. Just put a clip inside here and uh, increase it. Just to fill up the page. That's one mock up. So um, yeah, then I did some other mock ups here. This is just the same process. Now, this is just an image from a design, from someone's design. Let me just copy the image so you can see. Okay, let me go to. Uh, okay, so this is the original design. You feel me? This is the original design. So, all I just did is draw a rectangle over it. Just make sure it fills up the entire space. Just no excess, no less. And you are doing that, you fixing your design. And it's as simple as that. Hold up, very simple. So now the question you should be wondering or asking yourself is where do I get those images from? It's pretty simple. Those images are online. You know, like I said, Beans is a very wide place. You can just go to uh, Beans and search. Let me go to Beans. Nets. Internet talk is pretty awesome. Okay, the network has really been shitty today, but then I think it's awesome tonight. So, um, you just search for you can just search for any brand. Let's say, let's say, uh, uh, which brand can I search for? Which brand, please? Uh, okay, what brand, what brand am I working on? You just say bank. Just search for bank branding. You see a lot of branding there. You see, you see bank branding. You see a lot of them. I'm just going to look for one. I basically, just pick any. This is one. Just click on it. Then you can see their mockups. You can see the mockups they use. You can see their approach, their mood board. You can see everything basically. This is this this tutorial is just um, okay. You see, these are the mockups. I can decide to like take a screenshot of this with your system. Just there's print screen on your keyboard. Always check. There's always print screen on your keyboard. Just print screen it and carry it to your color draw. your color draw you know what you have to look out for is you know the background color is it is it match it doesn't match with the colors you're using if it doesn't match you have to do an art job of cropping out this phone cropping out the wristwatch you don't want to download more copy yeah? so you just do the hard work So let me just do this one quick, real quick. Let me just copy this. So you all have to like stop asking, where do you get more up from? Where do you download more up? Most people just create from existing ones. So like for this now, the only thing I need to replace here is the icon. So let me go pick my own icon. Okay. So this is the, the logo here. Yeah. You just pick it here. Okay. You just have to do is replace this with a circle. Just fill it up. Let's say I'll just use one color. Then the icon the center. It's too big, so you adjust it. So that fix that. Do the same thing here. Yeah. That fix that also. 
you just you know all of this you can just type your own whatever inside i can just decide to cover this you know give it some color like this you just cover it and you type in your own input and yeah i think the only thing needed here is just the logo easy peasy just replace replace and if you have to build a map up from scratch let's say uh, the ideal map up is not there you don't you, you, you have the picture or you don't have the picture or let's say someone sent you an image for example uh, you need to create a mock up let me see picture stand I'm type for picture stand Now for example, just see this online and probably you want to use this as your mock-up, you know. You want to use it as your mock-up. Just copy it. It's quite easy. Paste. And you just you know, do the same thing, basically. So now the work of the perspective tool that I was trying to show you guys earlier. Okay, so let me let me show you the work of perspective too. Not this. Okay, I want to copy this. The work of perspective too. This is the work of this is my letter here. Now you will see if you have to place this letterhead on this canvas now. This canvas is a bit slant. It slants towards this direction. It's not a straight line, it slants towards this direction. It's not a straight line. Yeah. So all you have to do is draw a line like that. On those slant edges. On those edges. Draw a line. On those slant edges. Draw a line. have to adjust the line so just draw a line on those edges okay so that will give you like direction so the next thing is you use your perspective to okay let me convert this to bit map then you use your perspective okay before before using my perspective to I just reduce it reduce a bit and um, drag it close objects perspective add perspective now it shows you this. Now with your add perspective, now you can drag it to those corners, 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 corners. So you feel me? You can now delete these lines. So it's it sits well, understand? So now, what if, you know, perspective two only work with straight lines? What if they are actually curved? For example, you want to place the, the brand logo on the strip of this wristwatch. Okay, this is it. This time you won't be using perspective, but you'll be using another tool called the envelope tool. So now you just, now, you know it's on a dark surface it should be color white you are placing it here so this time you just bring it close to it then you go to your envelope tool so with your envelope the envelope tool works like wrap you can shape your logo any way you want it you understand so that's basically what you will use the envelope tool to do so i'll just just select this you can drag and select those nodes together you can drag and select this together you know then now you have to follow the the shape of the exact place you want to place your logo 
Now, for example, it should be a straight line here. This is a straight line. This is one curve. Yeah, then it should come towards this way. Another one should be here. Okay, so let me go back to the envelope too. So I can get rid of this because I don't need it. I just need this. But I don't want it to get to the edge, yeah? So I'll just drag this closer. Let's it start from here. I'll just drag this like this towards here. Then this towards here. Then you see, you see this arrows pointing it, pointing you towards the wrap direction. You can just bring it back here to make it straight. Bring it back here to make it straight. So that settles that angle. Now it remains this side. So uh, I might have to get rid of this. Yeah. So I just click on this. This node. Can you see the curve? That curve. Then you do the same thing here. Get rid of this. It is this arrow used to get that curve. You know. It's, it goes like this. It's, it's supposed to slant in this manner. The manner of this line. Okay, let me bring this here. So you can see what I'm saying. So yeah, you carry this to go and slant like this. Bring this to slant like this. You get rid of this. You see what I'm doing? Bring this. So still minding this curve. You adjust accordingly. You are just accordingly then it gets the mm -hmm. just to make sure this curve is still there I don't know if you understand what i'm saying yeah so this is it i just placed the logo on the red i can therefore reduce it I reduce it then get rid of these lines i'm done with it so with the envelope tool all i just have to do now is to, to remove the remaining parts because obviously the full branding can show as I go. We just okay. basically that's it. What have I just done? I just placed the name on the wristband. I mean on the wristwatch. So pretty much that's how to um, create mockups from existing mockups that you don't have to download them. Because if you have to download these mockups individually, you might be downloading each file at, at 200 megabytes. I've downloaded a mockup of like 1.6 gigabytes. So imagine you using that amount of data. If you have spare time, sit down and create your own mockups. You can do them in Corel Draw. You can pretty much do them in Photoshop also. Probably one of the lessons I'll be I'll be showing you guys how to do mockup effectively with Photoshop. Photoshop is pretty easier than Corel Draw. So I think this is where I'll be stopping tonight. I feel this video is long overdue so um, should you have any question concerning this class concerning the placement concerning the use of any of these tools do leave your question in the comment section and I'll tackle it right here or we tackle it in the next class thank you very much for your time do make sure you subscribe if you are a new person to this channel make sure you subscribe turn on the notification button Leave a thumb up if you feel like it's worth it. And if it's not worth it, it's no big deal. And then endeavor to stick to this channel as I'll be bringing in more values and values to you guys. Thank you very much.